everywhere. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm not going to look forward to look at this guy. Right? Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Faith Victory Christian Center. It is a great morning to be alive. Yes, some of you are excited about Super Bowl Sunday, but I'm excited about being alive, seeing another day that God has made. Hey, to rejoice and be glad in it. It is a great day. So why, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do something for me while I do it. I'm going to ask you to tag and share. Invite somebody to Faith Victory Christian Center this morning. Come on, we're going to take that few minutes and do it. Let's do it right now. Okay, I'm sharing. What about you? Good morning, Mr. Ricardo Vincent. Good morning to you. I'm sharing. Let's go. Tell them, wake up, wake up. It is Sunday morning. It's time to hear what the Lord has to say. Come on and go to church for faith victory this morning. Hey, here we go. All right. I share, I tagged. I hope you've done the same thing. Now let's get this thing going. All right. Yes, wonderful day here in the Tennessee Valley Huntsville area. So glad that you come to join us this morning. Hey, it is a good day to be alive. Today is a good day. Come on, he said, let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then he said, again, I say rejoice because when we think about all the things that are happening in the world, hey, you can think again on what he's done for you and rejoice and rejoice and be glad in it. So we're glad that you came to join us this morning. Hey, we want to hear what the word of God has to say. Good morning, my cousin Orlando Dozier from Mobile, Alabama. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Rise and shine for the light has come for the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Come on, it's a great day to be alive. Hey, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Glad you, you tagged that shit. Good morning, my cousin Keisha. Good morning from Dothan, Alabama. It's watching Red is on the line this morning. We pray that your hearts are conducive this morning. Come on, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people that are signing on right now, that are waking up to hear what the word of God has to say. We pray that their hearts are conducive to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And we thank you, Father, that they're being changed from the inside out. That the word is coming alive on the inside of them. We thank you, Lord God, that this day, the doors of opportunity will be open for them. After hearing the word of faith, their lives, their lives are the better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and put those sanctified hands together and give God glory this morning for he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. So again, go ahead and tag somebody and share. Hey, tell them about what Victor Christensen is doing here in the Tennessee Valley area. We're coming live to you. So come on and worship and praise with me this morning. Are you ready? Tell your neighbor. Good morning, my cousin Nikki from Dothan, Alabama. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. So come on and let's worship God and praise him this morning. Are you ready? Let's go. I'm ready. I'm getting there. Thank you. There you go. Come on. Let's worship him this morning. Come on, how many of you know that the Holy Spirit is welcome in this place? Come on, right where you are, I want you to lift your hands right in your room, wherever you may be. Tell them you are welcome in this place and in my home. Come on, you have to invite him in in order for him to come. Yes, can you hear the music? Thumbs up me if you can. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. 
nothing can compare you are living home your presence Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of lies where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord come on and lift those hands and tell them this morning Holy Spirit you are welcome come for love Your presence, Lord. Come on, just one touch from him with you. Come on and lift those hands and sing with me. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. It's your prayer. Of the sweetest of love Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Thank you, Lord Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit You are welcome here Come for love Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Ooh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. Come on, tell them, come flood this place. Come flood this place. Your glory, God. It's what our hearts long for. Come on, let him feel that void this morning. Let him, come on, let him feel it for you this morning. Yes, your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Woo. Come on, this is my favorite part. Your presence, Lord. Come on, we want to be overcome by his presence. Come on, we want to be filled by His presence. Your presence, Lord. Come on, we welcome your presence. Yes, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness oh it's your presence lord Woo! holy spirit you are welcome you come on invited Come to love this place. Hayala Boksha. Woo! Woo! It's your presence, Lord. Come on, you got to long for his presence this morning. You got to long for his presence this morning. Oh, it's your presence, Lord. Your presence. 
Come on, it's his presence this morning. Come on, you gotta long for his presence. Come on, you gotta want his presence. Come on, we invite him to everything. Come on, but have you invited him into your life this morning? Have you invited him into your presence? Come on, he want to be in your presence, in your home, on your job, in your families. Come on, invite him. And I tell you, you invite him, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming like a flood. Come on, he's coming. All you got to do is just invite him this morning. You got to want his presence. His presence changes everything. Ooh. Woo. His presence changes everything. Come on. Your once desires are no longer. The way I used to live, I no longer want to live that way because of his presence. Come on, we invite his presence. He's a mighty God. Your presence, Lord. Come on, tell him, come flood this place. Come on, come flood this place. Your glory, God, is what my heart longs for. Your glory, God, is what my heart needs to be overcome by your presence. I need your presence, Lord. Come on, do you need his presence this morning? Not just for right now, but forever. Do you need his presence? Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Your glory, God, is what we long for this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. He's worthy. Come on, he's right in your, he's right in your living room. He's right in your bedroom. Come on and enjoy him this morning. Come on, lift those hands and throw your head back and tell him, Lord, you are welcome. In this place. Come on. I know it's just you and him. So go ahead and enjoy him this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on. He's done great things for us. He keeps doing great things for us. Come on. When obstacles are coming in our way, he helps us to overcome them. Come on. We want him to be glorified. Let us become more aware of your presence. Woo! Let us experience the glory of your goodness yes let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence lord let us experience the glory of your goodness of your goodness, of your goodness, of your goodness, his goodness, his goodness is what we long for, hallelujah, his goodness, his goodness, his goodness, come on and magnify him this morning, his goodness, his goodness. Come on, not your goodness. Come on, because it's not in us. Yeah. We can't do nothing in our own strength. Come on. We have to have him this morning. We have to have him. Come on. It is him that gives us strength. It is him. Come on. Come on. It is him. It is him that gives us the power yes. to live right. It is him. Come on. And only him. Only him. Right. Come on, let me be the one to lead you to him today. Come on, as we prepare our hearts, we're getting ready for Pastor Grimsley. Come on, I know, come on, you're in your worship mode, you're in your worship mode, you're in your worship mode, but come on, we're preparing our hearts, we're preparing our hearts. Come on, come on, prepare your hearts. Say, God, come on, do this for me this morning. Come on, do this for me this morning. Lay your hands on yourself and say, Lord, let my heart be conducive. To receive a life-changing word this morning. A word that is going to change not only my life, but for those that are around me. Come on. Come on, those that are around me. I'm ready to receive what thus said the Lord this morning. The word of God is for me. And I receive the word. So are you ready for the word? I'm ready for the word. So come on. As we prepare our hearts, let's get ready for Pastor Orlando Grimsley. Come on, put your hands together right where you are. And let's get ready for the word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, amen. 
Glory to God. Well, amen. Praise God. Well, thank God for Pastor uh, Vanessa. Amen. Awesome praise and worship. Amen. So we want to thank you. Amen. Uh, for taking the time out this morning to uh, be a part of the service. Amen. So thank God for you. Now, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Amen. It is Super Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Super Sunday. Amen. We've got the Super Bowl today. Now, look. I don't have a dog in the fight. I do not have a dog in the fight. I'm a, I'm a college guy, and as you see, you know, I'm repping my team today. And uh, I, I don't have an NFL team, but what I do is I, I support I support all of the Alabama alumni. Amen. That's my thing. I support the Alabama alumni, and so we're hoping that they do well today and uh, and all the endeavors. Uh, on the field, praise God for them, amen. And uh, but the tide, we will be back, amen. Praise God. So ain't nobody, ain't nobody happy today, but them Georgia fans. But that's okay, praise <laughs> God, amen. So we do thank you, amen. Uh, like I said, said at the beginning, I hope you and praise God that you uh, was one with God, amen. Because in the in the Bible declares that some issues talk about about being in the presence of God. It's really say, hey, in His presence is fullness of joy. So I get the joy when I'm in His presence, when I'm around around His Word. It's a cultivated atmosphere of praise that that's who I am, Amen. And that's what we're talking about. We want you to enjoy uh, the new kingdom culture that you are part of, and you'll see that in today's lesson. So let's pray, and we're gonna jump inside of that Word of God, and I promise you that we'll bless your life even more. So, Father, we thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, and honor to thy name, oh, Father God. Father God, we thank you now that all of your word is truth, truth without error. Father, we thank you now for the word of God going forward under hinder and check when he ate in foreign spirit. Now, God, we thank you now that the word of God is going all over the nation, to the north, the south, the east, and the west. We tell it to give up and hold not back. Now, God, we know you're not withholding anything good from us, and so we appreciate that in the name of Jesus. So, Father, thank you now as the word of God is going forward, the healing virtue God, the power of God is healing people from the very crown of the head to the very soles of their feet. And Father, we thank you for all that you are. And God, we understand that all that we will ever become and everything that we are is because of you. So we give all the praise, all the glory unto you. And we thank you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you. Amen. Praise God. So now, we're hoping if you've already tagged somebody, like she said at the beginning, to be able to, to want to take part in this word. Before they get to the Super Bowl, I promise you, God's got something extremely important that he wants you to know. He wants to impart inside of your life. And you watch what happens once you get this word. This word is a live word. It's an active word. The Bible says it is a spirit. Oh, yeah. The word of God is a is, is spirit feel. I mean, that means it's alive. It's workable or works inside of your life. That's why they call it the burden removing yoke storm power of God. So when I get God's word, I get his power to change my life. And that is going to be one of the essence of the key that we're talking about is the power to change my life, to transform me. I want to be in the image of who he is and display all of his qualities, his attributes, so that my life can be so much better. Amen. Praise God. Well, turning your Bible to Matthew 6 and 33, which is our jump scripture, we're talking inside of this series, talking about the kingdom of God. What well, he begins to say uh, in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. Now, if you jump back in verse number 25 of that same passage in Matthew chapter 6, it gets us to our subtopic today, talking about the cultural inside the kingdom of God. In other words, uh, a culture is a set of norms and practices and demands of how things are going to be governed, how things are to operate. And so once I make Jesus Lord of my life, I come out of spirit, uh, spiritual darkness into the light. In other words, scale falls off my eyes and whatever the devil's done before has been boozed with me and to believe in uh, all this crazy stuff and my life was upside down. But when I come over here, I get a new perspective inside the kingdom of God. Now, what I found out as a pastor over the years and over time is that many believers are not enjoying uh, 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 themselves inside the kingdom of God. In other words, I, you, know, you ever wonder why some people are able to uh, get things to work uh, inside of life and others struggle with that thing, can't, just can't get things to work inside their lives. There's got to be a reason why all that things are going on, why one gets and another one doesn't get it. One is uh, uh, activating, using the power of God, man. Uh, uh, you can see uh, 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 that the God kind of life uh, all over their lives and others, it just seems like they, it's things are not just working. What I'm finding out over time is 
that you have to embrace this culture. Gotta, gotta have this understanding of how things work. Now you can shop, you can run, you can do all those sort of things. Ain't nothing wrong with all that. We're not gonna throw rocks at all that. You can do whatever you got to get you get to get done. But here's the key. After you have run, after you have shot, after you have rolled, after you got all the water thrown on it, you need to get up. You're gonna have to get up. Get up and do what does serve the Lord God. I always wonder with people, you know, you, you know, you're laid out, you're slain in the spirit, but when you get up, did it change your life? That's the key. I can be, you know, as they call it, slain in the spirit, so people give this terminology. But when you get up, did your behavior change? Did, was there a change that happened on the inside of your life? God is more concerned with the change, the behavior, the attitude, the character traits that comes after, after all this stuff happened inside your life. Amen. So that's got to be a change so you can get results on the inside of your life, not only in your life, but inside the kingdom of God, that you can help other folks get results. And that's going to be the key for us to be effective and efficient witness of the body of Christ. Then guess what? We got to learn because he did. Uh, he, he did uh, tell us to go out and make disciples. Glory to God. So if I'm going to make a disciple, I want to make him like Christ and not like me with all my issues. I want to make him like Christ, even though I got issues. I know how to deal with it. I want to make folk like that that has problems, but I can teach them how to deal with the problem based off of God's word and enjoy the culture that you're in. So in Romans chapter 12, verses uh, uh, 1 and 2, he says, Now, therefore, I urge you, uh, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, that you present your body, watch this, holy, a living sacrifice, holy, accept to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of thy mind. Now, what happens is, when I came out of darkness and Mars light, he says, Now, look, there was old ways. Y'all know how it is. Come on, don't play with me. You know how it used to be where I came from. Where I came from out of the world, you know, I got used to the customs and norms and the policy and the culture that yet I was around. I know how to function. And I know you know how to function from where you came from. You know, some of us were scandalous, you know what I'm saying? Some of us was a master liar, you know what I'm saying? You know how you, you could trick the devil almost over there. And see, all that sort of stuff that you had going on over there, you was a player player. You know, you had a you had a girl for Monday, had a girl for Tuesday, you know what I'm saying? You had a girl, you had a girl for Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and you had a man for, for, for every, every over a month. You, you know, you had 12 boyfriends, one for each month, whatever it might have been that you were very good at over there. And see, when you come over here, it's a it's it's a new mindset. And so if you're wondering why folks are still tripping inside the body of Christ and doing the old things, the, 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 the old nature, we haven't, we haven't learned the new culture that I'm in. We haven't cultivated that thing so that it gives my life an opportunity uh, to change. And that change comes with a change agent. We'll get to that a little bit later on because God's not asking you to change all by yourself. God doesn't leave you alone. Now, I don't know who you are and where you at today, but God does not leave you alone. God's going to tell you certain things. He's going to give you help. Oh, yeah. And I always say one of our things we call him is that, hey, look, God is helping me and he's helping me right now. So God is helping me right now. So he's not telling you to do something that he's not giving you the power or the ability to do, nor the help provided in order for you to do it. Amen. So if God's giving you giving you something to tell you what he's going to do, he has it. He's got it ready for you that things can happen. Things can change. I don't care what you may be dealing with, what you struggle with, but God gives the end result. So he says it's got to be a continuation, a continuation of the change. I got to be a continue because even when I come over here inside of the kingdom of God, and as I continue to move along, I can easily, 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 easily fall back into my old way of thinking and to my old culture because the old culture, culture is going to always be knocking. It's always going to be knocking. You may have forgot about Sinead Day a little wrong, but they have not forgot about you. So it could be years down the line, 10, 15, 20, 30, and one day, boom, they pop up. There you go. Yes, indeed. So old nature, old culture, amen, glory to God is all up in you, amen. So you got to ask yourself the question today, am I living my best life? Am I living my best life? Now, most folks, when you come out of the world over here inside the kingdom of God, they begin to look at living their best life based off how much money that you have. Now, God has got no problem with you having money. We hope that you had a whole lot of it, uh, no matter what, inside of your life. But that would make you what I like to call incomplete. There's more to life inside the kingdom of God and than just the money. Now, now we, we know you need it. But God is more concerned with whole life prosperity, the whole concept of who you are. It's one thing to have money, but don't have the wisdom. It's one thing to have money, yo, but no self-control. Glory to God. Hey, it's one thing to have money, but don't have no peace of mind. Glory to God. Where you got to worry about somebody taking and stealing something from you. God said, look, when I give you the when I give you financial flow, 
Hey, it comes with no trouble. No flaw in that thing. You're going to be able to rest in it. You're going to be able to sit down in it. And you're going to be able to enjoy that thing the way God told you that you're going to be able to enjoy. In other words, you, hey, you got money, but money does not have you. In other words, I'm in, I'm in control of whatever I have. In my money, I view it as a tool and not as a mule. Glory to God. See, when I look at my money as a mule, then, you know, I'm stubborn. I don't move. But when the money that you have belongs to God, I didn't mean to get on this right here. But when the money that you have belongs to the Lord, oh, man, he can speak to you. Money will continue to flow. Hey, man. I told people a long time ago when I was with my pastor up at Faith, Faith, and Christian Center, shout out to old oh, pastor uh, Will and Janice Taylor, and uh, I began to learn then, I want to be a, I want to be in the money ministry. Glory to God. Now, that, that was a long time ago, but what I have declared has came true. God has put me in the money ministry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the question, am I living my best life? Amen. So, there's shifting. I got to shift. There's shifting uh, patterns and focus that can change your life. In other words, if I'm going to live my best life, I got to be able to shift the patterns. I got to be able to uh, be able to sh shift the way I think if I'm in order for me to change my life in every aspect of my life. Amen. And this is going to require me being able to renew my mind. Yes. Now only because remember when I came out of the world, glory to God, my spirit came alive to God, but my soul is nature. My soul is nature. My soul is nature. My mind, there's five components of my soul. My mind, my imagination, my intellect, my emotions, and my will. And to the degree that I'm willing to develop that would be the, to the degree that I'm going to have quality of life based off of 3 John 2. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as my soul prosper. So God over here inside the kingdom of God ties my prosperity, ties me doing well in every aspect of my life to the development of my soul. Glory to God. Amen. So I'm going to have to watch. I'm going to have to deal with those things because last time uh, while I'm doing my review, we found out last time that a uh, culture is a manifestation of a collective thinking of people. This means that whoever controls the mind, watch this, of the people creates and control the culture uh, 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 it, it, that's going to be inside of their life. So the devil is after your mind. God is after your mind. The devil is after your mind. And God is after your mind. Because whoever has control of the mind controls the culture. We're going to get to all of that to be able to see it. And so I'm kind of show you how to maximize your life, make your life so much better inside the kingdom of God. Oh, my God. So where you can flourish in life, be able to deal with all the things that happen inside of life because uh, it doesn't take, you don't have to be a genius to figure out people of the world struggle so much in the mind, struggle so much in the mind. Life just struggle. I, I don't even, oh my God. I, I, I told my wife, I said, look, I've been trying to get to my page, but I think I have to go through my own personal, whatever page. But I just want go to go to the ministry page because I can't deal with all the stuff that folks post and, and, and say and stuff come out of people's mouth, whether you, you see it on Facebook or they are, are they talking it out there where you're just going by. It's just destructiveness. And I want to take them and say, look, come here. Let me teach you how to live. Let me teach you how to keep your focus. Let me show you how to deal with the words or things that people say. Let me teach you how to deal with bad things happen to you. Let me, let me teach you how to keep money in your pocket. Let me teach you how to be healed and always healed. Let me teach you how to embrace the kingdom of God so that your life can be so much better. Glory to God. So that's the key. Amen. So the world and society has their own uh, uh, pattern of ways from where we come out. And that would lead to a, what they call a broken life. These patterns are easy to fall back into and can uh, be difficult to transform. So I got to watch it because I know where I came from. See, I got to watch it. Listen to me. You got to watch it because you know where you came from. Yes. Yeah. Got to watch it because I know where you came from. Come on here, somebody. You're not that saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost that you don't remember. Yeah, you used to shoot, them, shoot that dice. Yeah, you shoot that dice. You know what I'm saying? Play them cards. You used to gamble, do all them sort of things. And all it takes is one little perfect moment. If the right storm comes and the perfect moment, if you don't watch out, you'll be shooting that dice again. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, yes. Just one moment. So we, we would never throw a rock at anybody else because we understand it's just one moment. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just one moment away from being back where I came, came out of. Amen. Glory to God. So we need to understand it. Thanks God. Uh, thanks be to God. Amen. Over our life, the power of the Holy Ghost inside our life that keeps us from the moment. See, you ought to praise God right now for just keeping me 
from the moment. You know the way you used to think glory to God. You don't thank God for that. That's not like you used to because you know it only took one word over there. People say the wrong thing to you. You're going to cuss them out. You're going to let them have it. And matter of fact, you're going to say, now look, you, you, you don't know me. You don't know me like that. What, what you're really saying is, you, you don't, hey, you need to understand where I came from. Yeah, you didn't see me in my former life. You, you're messing with somebody who had a former life. And you, you, you don't know who you're dealing with. That's really what you see. But look, we want you to keep that person. You don't know me. We want to keep that. We want to, keep, we want to get rid of him. Oh, man. We want you to be that new creation, that new, that new creature that you are. Yes, that one, that lovable one in Christ. That's, that's the one we want. Yeah, we don't want to know the way you used to be. Praise God. Amen. But that's going to take you being in this word and embracing this new culture because I'm just telling you, that thought can come up. If you don't know how to deal with that thought and pull that thing and bring that thing into captivity, keep that thing in prison. So you got to get that thing alive. Shit, don't you let it out. And see, when you use those terminology on word, you don't know me like that. Look. You trying to you kind of put them out on probation. And we no 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 deny. We can't keep probate deny. We don't want you. No. Uh-uh. No, we don't we don't want we don't want to hold you. Yeah, you know how I do. Praise God. And I know we all think we're so holy denied. You know, you was we came out of your mother's womb straight, straight to church today. That's what you out of mother's womb straight to church. No, you were trifling. Yeah, come on here, somebody. Where are you? Oh yeah, you trifling. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Okay, how anointed you think you are. You you were trifling? And, and if it creates the right moment, the right atmosphere, the right word, enough pressure, you're cut up. Praise God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So he goes on to tell us in the message Bible, uh, when we begin to read Romans 12 and 1 and 2, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you came from, that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, and that's what God wants to do. He, God wants to change us from the inside out. Word teaches you outside in. Now, how do we know this? Because we get trifling, we're tripping because of the culture that we're in. In the culture of the world, it's how the outside look, and they'll connect about the inside. And that's why folks buy fake, fake stuff, because it makes them feel, feel good. Oh, okay, okay. You think I'm tripping? You think I'm tripping? Now, watch this, watch this. You, you, you can't afford Louis Vuitton, but you'll buy fake. Yeah, oh yeah, you're going to buy the fake stuff. You're going to get the fake stuff because why? The, the outside in. That's what the world, That's the world's culture. I got to look good on the outside, even though my inside's messed up. Okay, not about your inside, but my outside's got to look right. So I'll buy the fake because it, it makes me feel good on the, make me feel good uh, on the inside because of what I receive from the outside from the people. Make them think I'm rolling. I'm not rolling. See, I'm not, I'm kind of teaching a perp perpetrator uh, 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 trade here. So watch this. And so, you, you know, for you guys, you, you can't afford joints, but you're going to go get every set of joints. Yeah. Because the outside got to be reflected. Outside, outside, outside. God, you're, you're more concerned with your outside than your inside. See, no, no sense in me buying Jordans if, and I, if I can't afford to pay my bill. No sense in me driving a Mercedes and a BMW and I'm living in the projects. That don't make no sense. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But see, if I'm kind of keep up with the Joneses, if I'm kind of keep up this self-image on the outside, watch this. That's the world culture. And that's what the devil works on you. Even though you may get you may get a job and get good paying money, money but the devil's going to keep you down because you have to keep up with everybody else. And he teaches you, don't you save nothing. You spend every dime that you got. And I always tell people, every time you get paid, if you're not paying you, you you're crazy. You're cra Make yourself a bill. Make yourself a bill. Pay you. And I'm amazed at people. Year after year, year after year, month after month, won't pay yourself. It doesn't make any sense. It's the key to life. Because the, 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 the world culture keeps you is, I, oh, man, I, I, I got to spend stuff on me. And God kind of say, hey, how about, how about saving? How about saving? How, how, how about let's just say something, you know what I'm saying? Let's put something back in store so that you can be able to handle your business and maybe help some other folk. Glory to God. And the world's all about selfishness. Amen. So he said, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down uh, to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops a well-formed maturity in you. And that's what God wants you to do inside of this culture. Amen. So we found out last time in Colossians 1 and 16 that God made a visible world in an invisible world. He says now, for by him all things were created in heaven and earth. 
uh, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things were created uh, by him. So we understand that God made a visible world. He made an invisible world. Amen. That's called a spirit, spiritual reign. That's what he's talking about. This kingdom of God is the spiritual kingdom. And I got to embrace that culture for my life to be so much better and be an effective witness inside the body of Christ. And so he goes on to tell us that the spiritual world is more real. The things you cannot see is more real than the one that you're in. And the stuff that you see in the visible, in the natural, did not come from the world that you currently see. The stuff that you see now came from another world. That's why things are first spiritual, then natural. And so that's why by the act of my will and with my faith, I can bring things out of the spiritual world, come on here somebody, and I can proclaim it and bring it over here in the natural world. Now, it's almost trifling that you can't even see it because it, cause, cause really when you look at stuff, you don't even remember. That stuff came from the invisible world. When you look at a chair, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like it came from somewhere else. But if I go out in nature and I begin to look, because the raw material, if I look at something in the raw material state, it doesn't look like what's in my house. So a chair does not look, a chair, if you look at a tree, the tree does not look like a chair. So what did the chair come? chair came from the tree. It's invisible when you first look at it, but God said, I'll, I'll make the invisible and I'll, and I'll make that thing visible to you down here in the natural. So I'm being able to see these things. So it's the shape, form, and fashion. So I, I got to look. I got to go in the spiritual arena. Amen. So I didn't recognize it. I didn't recognize it in the original state, but now I understand what's going on. You didn't see chairs in your house, but when you look outside, it did, it did not come. It didn't come from right here. It came from over there. So a tree, tree produces the chair. Glory to God. So Hebrews 11.3. Now watch this. Let's prove this. Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the words, uh, by the word of God. So that things which are seen, watch this, are not made of things which do appear. Yes, which do appear. So Ephesians 1 and 3. This is how I embrace this culture. Blessed be the God, our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It takes faith to get it done here. But I'm not being blessed. I'm already blessed. So I have to shift. I got to shift my mind from the old, old nature, old culture. Because I'm waiting to see something to say that I'm blessed. The blessing of... See, we mess up the blessing. The blessing of God's empowerment to prosper on your life. The blessing is not the cash, the car, the crib, and the clothes. See, folks teach you in the world, it looks like most Christian folk. I'm blessed because of what? Because I got a nice house. I'm blessed because I drive a nice car. I'm blessed because I, you know, I, I can wear them. I can go first class now. I'm blessed because I got a rate. I'm blessed because of certain things. That's not the blessing. The blessing is the anointing of God that's on my life. The, the anointing of God. Yeah, yeah, the anointing of God. That's the blessing because it produces those things, but it is not the blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. So watch this because what, what happens is if I don't have the car, if I don't have the cash, if I don't have the crib, if I don't have the clothes, I'm still blessed. How do we know that? I know this because when I first got into the faith, thank God for my pastor. Man. Thank God when I got into the faith. Even though I'm saying I don't have the cash, the car, the crib, nor the clothes. But I found out based off the word, Ephesians 1 and 3, he's already blessed me. Oh, yeah. That shift my mindset, folks. That shift me. And that'll be a shifting that's going on in the inside of you. Because even though I may not have, oh, have all that stuff, I found out that the blessing that's on my life is the one that's going to produce everything else. Woo! Glory to God. So I get excited. And now I'm more motivated than ever. Because I find out, and you know, the summer said, uh oh, uh, old wretched like me. I, that's not you in the motto. Ha <laughs> ha. That's not the old. Born in sin, shaking in iniquity. Oh my God. Folks better cast you down, told you you're no good, you're never gonna become anything, you're struggling, nothing's gonna happen to you. And then you found this scripture, said, I oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed when I go in. I'm blessed when I come out. Oh my God. Glory to God. I am the head and not the tail. I found out some things from God. That was the key. I found out. And see that, that the anointing of God, 
that God produces in this culture the things on my life so my mind can stay clear. My mind can stay alert. I don't have to be tossed to and fro. I'm not in depression. I'm not into PTSD. I'm not into anxiety. I am not crazy, but my mind is pure because it stayed on him. And those are the key inside the kingdom. I don't care what they say about me over there. Only thing that matters to me, because by acting my will, I say God's word has governed and ruling authority over my life. It's governed. It's ruling. It's the final say so over my life. So I don't care what other folks are saying about me. I only the only thing I care about is the one that matters. What does he say? God says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Oh, you need to listen to him. He's saying you're beautiful and wonderful man. So I don't care what a man or woman say about me or say about you. You got to know one thing. I'm beautifully and wonderful man. You're not going to treat me in the way you want to. You How you treat them other women out there or them other men like they treat them in the world. I am different. I'm a different breed. I am birthed from heaven. Birthed from the spirit of the living God. I'm different. I'm different. Tell somebody I'm different. I'm different. Can't treat me like that. No. And you raise your children that way. Hallelujah. You raise your children like that. Glory to God. So little Ricky can't trickle on in life. So oh, Tanene can't get a hold on him later on in life. He won't be moved by the hips and the breasts and the chest because he had learned because you taught them based off the word of God who they be. Glory to God. I'm going to help you today. I'm trying to help you how to get your household and your family right. Which is happening. That's it. Glory to God. It is what it is. Amen. So I've already been blessed. So 1 Corinthians, y'all ain't getting nowhere today. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. He said, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear have heard, neither have entered to the heart of man, watch this, the thing which God has prepared for me. Did you understand? Even when I was out there on the road, you know, usually you were smoking that dope, you was drinking your bottle, when you was cutting the food, when you was homeless, when you didn't have no covenant right with God, when you was acting up, lying, cheating, stealing, when you were doing all that, God said, I already prepared some things for you. That's, but you got to embrace this new culture that I got going on for me inside the kingdom of God. But I got some things that's been prepared for you. It's not like God's waiting on you to get saved and come inside the kingdom of God. Now, I'm talking to you. Maybe you know somebody has not made Jesus Lord of your life. And I'm sitting there telling God got some things prepared for you. Even the one that's already in the body of Christ today, maybe, just maybe, you've had a moment inside of your life. You've had some ups. You've had some downs. And if you keep on living, folks will try to knock you all the way out of, out of life. But you've been standing by the power of God. By the grace of God, you've been standing. And I'm here to encourage you today to keep on standing. Yes, sir. You keep standing. Day by day. If you keep answering the bell, that's the only way you'll lose, lose a fight with God. If you do not answer the bell, picture yourself as a boxer. Round by round. Hey, every time they go ding, ding, you get up and you answer the bell. Every time they say ding, ding, you get up and answer the bell. The only way you don't win is if you faint in your mind. The Bible declares you only lose when you're fainting in your mind. And I'm going to show you how to pull down the stronghold. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to pull it down so you can be able to walk into faith and receive and have Hey, because this culture has produced something on me. It's excited me. It's got something going on on the inside of me. Watch this. It's not just for now, but it's your whole life. I tell people I'm the same way. From day one to now, over 30 years, I'm the same once I made Jesus Lord of my life. Glory to God. I know what he will do and what he can do in the inside of your life. Amen. He takes people from being low born of nothing or no degree. And that's the power when you come over here inside the kingdom culture. Maybe you have status. Maybe you have status. You got status right now in the world, in the area that you're in. Maybe you're the CEO. Maybe you own major corporations. Oh, yes, you do. Maybe you got all those things going on. And it seems like when you have it all, notice I said seems like you have it all. You don't need a God. I don't need to embrace the culture because I already have everything I need. That's sad and that is mistaken, my friend. You are sad. That is sad and that's a mistaken conviction. Glory to God. Because the Bible declared, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Hey, he's a reward of them that diligently seek him, and you're not seeking him. So you need to change your theory of operation. I don't care where you're sitting at, what you think you know. You think you know, but you do not know. It's void of your relationship with God. Oh, my God. Allow the power of the Holy Ghost to transform you. We're going to get to that, y'all, because that's what produces the fruit on the inside of your life, inside the culture. God's not telling you, God, that when we get to 
Because God's not telling you about a bunch of rules and do's and don'ts. Oh, no, he's not telling you about all that. You're going to be a, a, it's going to be an act about your own personal will. And you know what? I don't want to do that. Just, I just don't, I just want to do that no more. You ever hit, when I came out, I said, you know, I don't want to do that no more. You know, I don't want to do that no more. It was not a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's just his will became my will. <laughs> his God's will became my will. So the things that I used to desire, I desire no more. Why? Because the Holy Ghost has changed from me from the inside out. And watch this. When you change from the inside out with the power of God, we all can get the benefit from your life. Oh, come on, talk to me. We can all get the benefit out of your life. God created you for a benefit, for a benefit of others. So whatever you have, watch this, it's for other folk. Oh my God. God, you need to listen to me. Whatever you currently have is for other folk. And see, because you're the CEO, because you got all this, you can't handle that. So you fight God with the culture. You fight him. You fight him. You fight. Because I can't have none of that. See, when you come outside here inside the kingdom, he don't care what military, what rank you have, how much you own, and how much money you got in your bank account, how much land you own. He doesn't care. He said, whoa. The first shall be last. He's called you to be a servant. Oh, my Lord, you need to listen to me. I'm called to be a servant first. Hey, so you so you gotta come out, you gotta come out, out, out of this world that you in when you got it all, when you got it all, all like that, and you're rolling. And then you come over here inside the kingdom, watch this, and he tells you servant first. Yeah. See, I might be a pastor. See, that's the problem that we got now in the body of Christ. It, nobody wants to serve. Nobody wants to serve. And God says, that's your primary function. That, in, in this culture, primary function is to serve other folk. Glory to God. So it's a shifting that must go on because my own nature, remember, I'm selfish and get over. And now I'm over here and God tell my serving other folk. That's why he said, no man. <laughs> If you want to follow me, you got to take up my cross and bear it daily. If you're going to follow me, because look, I, I got to make myself of no reputation. No reputation. Hey, yes, sir. Hallelujah. I'm a title sergeant major in the Marine Corps. means nothing to God. It does nothing. means nothing in, this, in the kingdom of God. I got the degrees. Like I got the degrees. But a degree, what be a bachelor, math, that don't mean nothing inside the kingdom of God. Absolutely nothing. You can be a prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, and an apostle, missionary, whatever you want to call yourself, doctor, lawyer, whoever. Don't mean nothing. You're still called to serve. Yes, sir. You're still called to serve. That's your primary job, primary function. Primary function in life is to be a servant of God. And see, that's hard to handle when you're coming up over here, when you think more highly than you ought to think of yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Now, we're going to get to all that because my example is coming up on that one, y'all. But God has revealed. Watch this now. He said, but I, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Watch this now. What God has prepared for them that love him. But watch this. But God had revealed them unto us by his what? By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Uh-huh. For what man knoweth the things of God, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, oh yeah, oh yeah, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Which things also we speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Ghost teach it. Told you, Holy Ghost going to do the teaching. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, Old nature, old world, old culture that you came from. Now watch this. Receiving not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? So if I don't come over here, when I come over here, I got to lay it all down. I got to begin to learn of this culture and how this thing operates. So that I can fulfill my divine purpose and divine will that God has for my life. Glory to God. So that has to happen. Now watch this example. I don't know my time. My time is just rolling on me, y'all. But watch this. September the 8th, 1988. While my hard charging double dogs out there, man. Marine Corps. 
I stepped foot on an island called Paris Island, South Carolina. It is the birthplace, uh, uh, one of them, the other one, San Diego, to earn the title as a United States Marine. I'm from the backwoods of Hetland, Alabama. A farm boy. I don't know nothing. Man, I, I, all I know about a few, few hogs and cows and, 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 and hay, you know, and whatever you learn in school. I don't know. I don't, I don't know nothing about no military. I don't, I don't know all that stuff. But watch what happens when you get on the yellow footprints. You've not entered inside of their kingdom. It's almost like the kingdom of God. The first thing that they know in the Marine Corps is I got to transform you. You're going to, I'm going to transform you, give you the opportunity to earn the title to be a United States Marine. Now, once you earn this title, you, you need to understand something. Once a Marine, always a Marine. We don't revoke that thing. Once you earn it, it's yours. Now, you got to give it away, but you earned it. Likewise, inside the kingdom of God, once you come in and make Jesus Lord of your life, you you can't earn it. <laughs> By grace, we are saved. But watch this. The devil can't take it from me. Just like in the Marine Corps, can't nobody take away the title that I earned. He got said, nobody can't take away this title. I shed the blood. I sent my only begotten son to shed the blood. So that by faith, oh, by grace, you didn't earn this one. See, over here in this culture, I had to earn the title. But God said, you can't earn this thing. No, 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 no. I'm going to lay down, I'm going to have, I'm going to sow my son, my only begotten son for you to pay the price for your debt. Got it? And so once we hit the ground, now watch this, we got people coming from all the places around the United States and around the world, hey, to earn the title. We now have been coming into this thing. We got to learn all this stuff. We know nothing about it, but we all got to learn it. So they got drill instructions to help us along that way. That almost sounds like God. God says, look, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God's Holy Ghost is the field agent here on earth to help you just like the Marine Corps had drill instructors ready to help me to earn the title, to take me in the right direction. I'm here to tell you today, the Holy Ghost, it will help you enjoy and embrace the culture of God. Because those things are going to be produced that way. And so I had to begin to, to now embrace and learn how to operate and how to live in this new culture that I've entered. It's a whole other world. It's chaotic. I don't know anything about it, but it's chaotic. All the things are going on, and I got to learn. But so they start giving us books that made us start reading stuff and having repetitious information. We get up and do the same thing day by day. We get up and do the same thing day by day. We get up and do the same thing day by day. March the same way. March to the right case. We'll march, we'll, we'll sit down, we'll run, and we do all these things and uh, we, we, we by step by step by step by step. What are they doing? They're teaching us how to live in this new country. They're giving us customs and courtesies and laws. They begin to set up Marine Corps orders and say, this is the way and regulation we're going to operate. This is the way standard operating procedures and uh, uh, SOPs stand up. This is the way we're going to function. This is the way we're going to flow. And this is what we're going to do. But I need you to learn about this thing. And it's like right inside the kingdom of God. God said, I'm going to give you the Bible. I'm going to give you the Bible. But not only I'm going to give you the Bible, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit that's going to live it on the inside of you. That's going to show you and going to help you along your way. You see how these things are working together. It's just, they're just, they're just flowing together. So after I've learned how to shoot, I've, I've learned how to march and I've learned how to run. I've learned, I, I, I've learned the values. I learned, I learned about honest courage and commitment. I, I begin to understand the warrior ethos and, and I begin to understand the whole complex of what it is to be a Marine. And, and they set me up and give a certain test. That sounds like God. You know, along your way in this culture, you're going to have tests. There are going to be trials. There are going to be tribulations. There are going to be temptations. There's going to be challenges on the way. Why? Is it called the test of faith. Yeah. Same way like going to the gym. You're not going to get bigger, uh, you know, with muscle. Now, you may get bigger with other parts of you, with flabby. But if you want muscle, you're going to have to work out. you got to have some resistance. Same way inside the kingdom of God, there's going to be some things that's going to come by your way around, around your walk that's going to be able to show you like, oh, okay, okay. I, hey, hey, this is the test of faith right here. Yes, indeed. I got to begin to work those things out. So they do those things because what they're doing in this transfer, they're going to teach me how to talk. They got to talk Marine Corps talk. Likewise, inside this culture, I got to have kingdom talk. They also 
also going to show me how, how I'm supposed to behave and my, my, what my attitude ought to be. And you know that sounds like God. He began to tell you what your behavior should be. He said, this is your attitude. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. He's going to begin to talk to you about respect. He's going to, we, we have to learn that thing, that certain thing. We got to respect this. We got to respect that. We got to get respect. Doesn't that sound like the kingdom of God? That in this walk, you're going to have to respect the God. You're going to respect the, the power of Jesus. You're going to respect the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to respect other folk, even though you may not like them. I got to respect them because this is the way God begins to tell me how I, I got to walk. He said, now I work as unto the Lord. I don't work as unto men. Now remember when I came on the world, I was working for a man. But God gets over here in this new culture begin to tell me, no, 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 not any longer, my son. You, you, you may be at McDonald's, but you ain't working for them. I am your employer. You work. And all work is required. It's like you hunted me. So now I have a different perspective. So now my production is not based on what the job is paying me. My production is based on who I serve. Oh, you see the shift? Do you see the shift that has to happen? Now, and I know some of y'all don't want to hear that. You might, you might not want to send this to nobody because they don't want to hear that because they thought they, they, they was putting out their productivity was based on how much they got paid. And God dismissed all of that. You don't look, you may get a paycheck from it, but that's not who you're working from. Hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, man. And so what happens in the Marine Corps, the final thing he taught us was, Look, just in case you won't cut up, you don't want to honor uh, all the customs and, and you don't want to behave right. You don't want to have the right attitude. We're going to set up some, uh, 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 what I call, uh, non-judicial punishment. We're going to set up some bylaws, uh, some court marshals, Article 15 uh, uh, site type hearing, just in case you mess up. We're going to whoop you back in shape and, uh, and we're going to discipline you. Doesn't that sound like the kingdom of God? The Bible declares that God says, I discipline them whom I love. But see, when I was over here, I didn't enjoy discipline in the world. But over here, God says, I only discipline those whom I love. If God doesn't correct you, that would tell you he doesn't love you. Oh, oh my God. Oh, y'all, I'm out of time. Oh, my God. I can go on and on and on and on and on. Oh, my God. Man, look, thank God for you. I'm out of time, man. We're going to pray, man, and we're going to pray for you and, and uh, let you go. But look, be back on Wednesday night, man. I'm going to talk about it in just a few moments, but I'm telling you right now, man, it seems like those 40 minutes flew by real quickly. Amen. So, look. It's about eyes are closed, saints are praying, all the building. Father, we thank you down in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor to that name. And God, we thank you while that word of God was going for, that God, it was doing a transformation in the lives of your people. Oh God, the center essence of who you are. The word is changing you day by day, making you so much better. And Father, we thank you right now that lives are better because of this anointed word. And Father God, the word is alive. And we know anytime your word is called power goes with your word. So I believe that you were healed. I believe healed. I don't care what was a headache, a backache, knee ache, whatever it is on the inside of you. I believe you were healed. Oh, man. Yes, indeed. You just embrace it and you receive it by faith. Now, Father, I thank you for your people, God, that's in this area and all across the United States, Father God. And I pray as they, the ones for me right now, even ones who's going to listen and watch the broadcast later on, I pray that their life is so much better. Everything's going well inside their life. God, help them. Give them the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that they need. Any difficult situation, God, oh, my God, give them the how-to, the wherewithal to be able to handle it. Oh, my God. Make a way out of no way for them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. The ones who are knocking at the door, hey, look, allow God to come into your life. Oh, yes, allow him to come in. At the beginning, you, held, you, you, you heard Pastor Vanessa begin to talk about this relationship. That you should have with God. He's an amazing God. We don't just sing about it, but it's a personal relationship. And that's what's so personal uh, uh, with God when I go into praise and worship is, it's personal. We ain't worry about the praise team, what they say. No, 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 this is personal. This is me. Me and God. That's really what she was really telling you, is you and God. Because something happens on the inside. Open up your heart. Allow him to come into your life. Make Jesus Lord of your life and you watch what they do on the inside of your life so father i thank you for the people today 
who's made a conscious calculated decision to come inside the kingdom of God and allow God to be a part of life, allow God and the spirit of God to transform their life. We thank you. Thank you for that today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise. We give you glory, God, for everything that you do on the inside of our life. And God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, look, before we go, amen, uh, of course, we want you to go out and have a wonderful day. No majority of you are going to watch the Super Bowl and uh, those sort of things. But we want to give you an opportunity to give, amen. So inside the kingdom of God, if you can text, uh, uh, we got it set up that you can give electronically, amen. So you can text 54244. That's uh, 54244. And in the message box, you put in FVCC, amen. Glory to God. And you'll be able to show your tithes and offerings and your gifts of love. Amen. And I'm telling you, God, it may leave your hand, but it never leaves my life. When I sow in the good ground, I always have a just vibe right of, of, for what has left my hand. It's a part of me. My ties off and gifts of Oh, yeah, that's part of my life. It may leave my, leave my hand, but it never leaves my life. And so God will respond. Amen. To your giving. Just trust me. We're going to get to all those lessons, but he will respond. So we'll give you the opportunity. Make sure you put FVCC in the message box and then come back to your amen. And remember, God's going to press that thing back. Let's press it down, shake it, and run it over. And you watch you will have a first-class lifestyle where you will wear the best, eat the best, live in the best, look the best, and drive the best. And you'll show enough holler, I go first-class in life. Amen. So God bless you today. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on this Wednesday. Amen. At 6 p.m. Amen. And the word is going down. And look, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. So make sure you tell somebody, uh, somebody about us, even your family, your friends, co-workers, whoever it may be. Hey, join us. Amen. Just join. Watch. I promise you, the life's going to get so much better. So God bless you. God keep you. Amen. On behalf of myself and Pastor Vanessa, hey, we'll see you on Wednesday night. Amen. God bless you.